1775. Eventually, in 1777, at the Battle of Saratoga, was put in command of a mixed force of riflemen and light infantry uh, drawn from the ranks with muskets and bayonets. The light infantry company of every regiment were the most disciplined and agile and toughest troops, so they would be the equivalent of our special forces, but they were armed with muskets and bayonets. And at Saratoga, Morgan's riflemen picked off all the British officers and all the NCOs, and the British started to fall apart. And they kept going forward in bayonet charges, and they'd run into Dearborn's light infantry, who was armed with bayonets, and were able to fight off the British advance. And the British lost the Battle of Saratoga because of a combined arms of rifles and bayonets. So they figured that out. Now to counter the American rifles, not only did the British recruit their own loyalist riflemen, but they actually hired German hunters from the Bavarian area called Jaegers. And you will see later clean coated German Jaegers with their short rifles coming out and participating here today. As we're seeing reinforcements coming up, the Americans have come out of the woods on the far side on the, uh, and have driven the foraging party that was back in the cornfield at the back of this area. Meanwhile, they have, the Crown forces have sent out more of their regular forces supported by field artillery. Now, field artillery is a cruise service piece, and you load and fire it very similar to a musket, except it doesn't have a flintlock firing mechanism. It has to be touched off by this uh, smoldering match rope that's held on a pole called a ring stock. And it, that uh, match rope smolders kind of like a cigarette butt. And you touch that off on the vent at the back of the cannon to touch off the powder. But if you watch the men servicing the artillery piece, a man puts his thumb over the vent, another man goes down and worms the piece to make sure there's no powder residue in the back, then goes down and sponge it with a lambskin headed rammer after they make sure there are no sparks in the tube that could set off powder in a premature ignition. They then load a powder bag, ram that home with a rammer, and then load in whatever the appropriate artillery projectile is. A cannonball for distance, grape shot, which are a sack of, let's say, tennis size, ball size uh, ammunition, or a tin can filled with musket balls, which is a canister. Obviously, the last two uh, are deadly anti-personnel weapons at close range. Cannonballs are for distance and for knocking down things like fortifications and putting holes in houses. Now, being a crew service piece, artillery could be fired very, very rapidly in combat situations. Um, our reenactor artillerists are extremely well trained and we actually double worm and double sponge between shots for safety so that there will be no accidents in handling the rather large powder charge. They're, they're firing probably close to a half pound or a pound of powder uh, uh, from each shot where the muskets are firing probably no more than 110 grains of powder. Now out of the glass 
master point fortifications, we now have the next arm available to the, Briti the uh, military of the 18th century, and that's the mounted troops. We have dragoons of the 17th, white dragoons dressed in red coats, and uh, looks like the green coats of Basil Tarleton is Legion. Yeah, we go. There's one more mountain. Okay. Okay.